In this tutorial, we'll edit, create, and manage materials, which are used for rendering an object in Bonsai 3D. This video does not include information on how to apply and adjust materials on your objects. Please see the texture mapping video tutorial for more detailed information on this. The materials palette is located in the main palette and contains a set of generic materials that can be modified, or you can create your own. Click once on a material and it highlights with a black border to designate that it's the active material. The name of the currently active material is also listed at the bottom. Only one material can be active at a time and the active material is automatically applied to any new object that you create. By clicking the icons in the lower left corner you can view materials by name, by small icon, or by large icons. We'll set it back to view by large icon which is the default. Double click on a material or right click and choose edit to modify any of the parameters for that material. This invokes the material parameters palette where you can change the name, color, reflection, transparency and the default texture size. We'll talk more about these parameters in just a moment. You can also preview the material using some basic shapes in the preview window. If you want to create a new material simply double click in a blank area or right click and choose new material and a new material is added to your materials palette. Observe that the parameters for this new material are shown in the material parameters palette. Let's take a more detailed look at the material parameters. You can name your material by typing a name at the top. To change the color of the material, click on the color tab, select the plane option, and click on the color swatch, and a standard color picker will appear based on your operating system. To load an image map for a material, select the texture option, click on the open icon, and then click the load button. Choose any pixel image that's on your hard drive. Click the open button and that image is then loaded as the color for your material. In order to see image maps in the modeling window, you must either be in shaded full mode or if you're in shaded work mode, you must turn the texture option on in the display options palette. Now let's look at the reflection parameters of the material. Click on the reflection tab and choose the sphere for the preview. Click on the constant option and this causes the material to render with a constant intensity in which lights and shadows have no effect on the surface. Click on the shaded option and you can control how light is reflected off the material. Basically the ambient factor controls the amount of ambient light reflected off the surface. The diffuse factor is the actual light sources that are reflecting off the object such as distant cone and point lights. The specular factor is the hot spot, that's the light that hits that surface and it bounces right back and hits you in the eye. The specular factor controls the brightness of the hot spot and the specular roughness controls the size of that hot spot. And the color of the specular hot spot is controlled by clicking on the color swatch and setting that to any color. Now let's look at the transparency tab. If none is selected then no transparency is applied to the material. Click on the linear option and there's a slider that controls the amount of transparency of the object. We can also load an image map. For example, click on the texture option, click on the open icon, and then when you click on the load button you can load any standard pixel image. It should be noted that if the image contains an alpha channel, the level of transparency can be determined by selecting the use alpha channel option. If no alpha channel is present in the image, then this option is ghosted and the level of transparency is determined by the intensity of the pixel colors. Click the OK button and the transparency is determined by the image map texture. The last material parameter that we'll look at is the default texture size. This is the real world dimension that corresponds to one placement of the texture. For example, if a texture map of a brick pattern consists of five bricks horizontally and the bricks are eight inches long, the size parameter should be set to 40 inches in order for the brick texture to appear accurate. It should be noted that this is not critical that this parameter be set correctly right from the beginning as the edit texture tool allows you to dynamically change the size of the material directly in the modeling window. The parameters for your material can also be selected from a predefined set of materials. Click on the arrow in the lower right corner of the material parameters to invoke the material libraries portion of the palette. Bonsai 3D comes with numerous libraries that come with the program and you can even save your own. You can see from the list here that each of the libraries contain numerous materials that are already set up for you. In order to apply some of these preset materials to your currently active material, there's a 
few different ways of doing that. One way is you can double click on it, or you can click on the apply predefined material button, or simply drag and drop that predefined material onto your current material. And all the settings for that predefined material are now set to your currently active material. We can still make changes to our material as described previously, even though we started with a predefined material. Now let's say we want to save a material as a predefined material in our own predefined library. In this example, we'll create a transparent water texture and save it to a custom library. We'll begin by right-clicking in the blank area in the Materials palette and choosing New Material. Let's give it a name. Let's call it Blue Water. For the color, we'll choose the Texture Map option, click the Open icon, and it just so happens that I downloaded an image of water from the Internet. And I load that image and that becomes a color of our material. Click on the Reflection tab and what we'll do is uh, set the preview to be a sphere and we'll turn the specular factor up really high so we get a nice bright hotspot to sort of simulate reflection coming off the water. For the transparency, we'll choose Linear and give it about a 50% transparency. That's it. We're done with the material and we can apply it to our objects in the scene. What if we plan on using this material again and would like its settings to be saved in our predefined material libraries? Well, simply click the arrow to expand the predefined libraries. We click on the New Material Library button, and we give our new library a name. Let's call it Water Materials. Click the OK button, and a new material library is created which doesn't contain any materials yet. Now let's say we want to add the current Blue Water Material to our new Water Materials library. So we'll click on the Save Material as Predefined button, and we can give the new material a name. It will default to the currently active name, but we can give it a different name inside the library if we want. Click the OK button and the material parameters are now saved in the predefined material library. We can now access these predefined material settings from this library and any other Bonsai 3D project. As a side note, all the predefined materials that come with Bonsai 3D cannot be modified and are located in the Bonsai 3D Materials folder, which is located in the Bonsai 3D Application folder. The new predefined materials that you save are located in the Bonsai 3D Materials folder, which is located in your User Documents folder on your hard drive. Your Documents folder contains a Bonsai 3D folder for all of your personal materials, place content items, and window door libraries that you create yourself. One last thing before we conclude. All the materials used in a project are embedded inside that Bonsai 3D file, including all image maps. Thus, you can open a Bonsai 3D file on any other machine and not worry about any external image map links. This concludes the Bonsai 3D Materials video tutorial.